Hi, everybody. Uh, today, I want to talk about the sacred. I know that when I've experienced what I would call the sacred, it, it's been much more immediate. It hasn't been related to an organization or anything like that. I know when I saw my little daughter being born, when I saw her head crowning, coming out of her mother's body, something came over me. I was overwhelmed with this sense of sacred responsibility and this wonderful gift and awesomeness was being, was being given to me, that somehow life loved me enough to do this for me. And I would call that the sacred. I mean, we reserve the sacred for these special occasions, like when we get married, when our children are born, at the death of a loved one. We recognize that there's somehow we're connected to the larger picture of things, that the circle of life and all that. But really, isn't that reality always present? Isn't that just reality? And so for me to experience the sacred, I need to get with reality, that underlying reality that life is being given to me. It is a gift. Life has loved me enough to let me be alive. And I've heard it's against all the odds. Somehow I got conceived. I made it through gestation. I made it through birth. And I've made it for all these years intact, you know, trying to weave my way through things and some, you know, garner some happiness here and there. But really, I reserve that sense of sacredness to my deathbed or the birth of a child. I don't want to wait because I know what I want is available right now. This is just amazing to have the opportunity to reflect on what what is. And I think that is what makes the sacred a sacred experience is when we reflect on it, when we hold up our consciousness to that mirror and then it is reflected back, right? You hold up two mirrors to each other that infinite thing going, that expansive thing. That's what makes experience sacred. And I have experienced, and I know that that can be anywhere, anytime, doing anything. What's the opposite of sacred? Don't we say it's the profane or something like that? But really, how could I even experience the profane if I weren't there to experience it? So that sacred is giving me life. So I am a choice about it. I can actually put my effort into going for the sacred or succumbing to the profane. Because the profane is just the absence of consciousness. As numbing as that feels, which is sometimes welcome, it is still unconscious and not my highest choice. Because I want to know. You know, there's a story about a king who grants somebody who does some, something good for the king, he grants them one wish. Just one wish, anything, you name it, you can have it. And then the person says, you know, what if I want you? I don't want anything in your kingdom. I want the king. I want the king himself. There's something about that story that has stuck with me because I had an option that I get to, I get to desire the creator. You know, I've heard and I believe that's where I came from. That's where I'm going to go. So why not just enjoy these worldly things while I'm here? Why? What's the big yearning for something that is it's almost inevitable that I, I'm going to return to it? But somehow there is a yearning in my heart. One, I know that this is a collective thing, that there is this deeper yearning or deeper experience in everyone. And it manifests in so many different ways. You know, the surfer will look for the perfect wave. The archer will look for that perfect moment of union between arrow and target or whatever. You know, I don't want to get too zen on us here. Somebody once said, life is fine. Why define it? I don't want to define anything. But really, I just want this for myself. And I know it isn't in externals. When I've been in places, I've been in really exciting places, stimulating environments. And unless I'm connected and know that inside myself the outside never adds up it never ever adds up but once i am connected the outside falls into place so easily 
I can experience the sacred in the midst of regular life. Yeah. Love you. Thank you.